Maguire is here with us this morning to give us his verdict on the damned United uh-huh. and also knowing which knowing yeah we actually sat beside each other that's right it doesn't happen very often yeah, yeah. Out in Dundrum I hadn't that's been right. to the cinema in Dundrum it's very nice out there nice comfortable cinema yeah good that's screen good sound all that stuff you the gates of Dundrum and that could just be a world a it? town it's amazing, you could put a big it? glass bubble yeah. over it Fantastic. And you'd only ever have to leave if you needed fake tan or more of that <laughs> stuff on your hair or makeup or whatever yeah, it is. There is. I'm sure there's plenty of fake tan in Dundrum. Oh, I'm sure there is a lifetime supply, yes, for the <laughs> new citizens. See, I, don't, I don't get across, but I went to actually went on the Lewis from. Oh, yeah, very comfortable. Over there very comfortable, yeah. Gorgeous. Very really comfortable. Good. Anyway, uh, Damned United, first of all. This is the one about Brian Clough. Brian Clough. Football Clough. manager. Clough, Clough, yes, well, Brian yeah, Clough, myself. the former football manager, yeah. who was a great character in fairness to him, Ian, and it's only right and proper that they can make a movie out of him uh, and his life and the incidents and events, because he's a witty guy, uh, he was a funny man, and he also spoke a lot of sense, uh, and he was a great manager, a great football manager as it goes. So we're going back to the early 70s here for uh, a movie uh, written by a guy, uh, the guy rather... Uh, uh, Morgan, who has written The Queen and Frost Nixon and does these kind of real-life, crossover, real-life yeah. uh, fiction, faction, you know what I mean? Um, from a book uh, by David Peace, which is a far heavier book than the movie. The movie is quite light-hearted indeed, and it basically tells the story about Clough's 44-day stint as the manager of Leeds United in 1974, and Clough is played by Michael Sheen, who specialises in these kind of real-life characters. He plays Tony Blair, and he played, uh, like, uh, in David Morgan's Frost, movie, played David Frost yeah, there just yeah. recently, yeah. And he, but Clough is this kind of big-headed, big-mouthed, very sure of himself, very cocky kind of guy. And uh, Sheen plays him, as, as you know, you, as he does typically with this kind of great precision. He's very good on f- mm. uh, movement. He's, He's very great. Mimic, good very good mimic, yeah. very good impersonator yeah, with yeah. the voice and with the movements and all that kind of stuff. So he does that perfectly. So in the short version of the story, Clough arrives at Leeds, who were champions, uh, of the league when their beloved manager Don Revy who is played by Colin Meaney yeah. left to take up the England yeah. job and Meaney does a very good Don Revy as it goes uh, he has a great reputation Clough has turned an ordinary Derby side into one of the uh, one of the uh, top teams in the UK um, but going to Leeds is going to cost him because he's going to have to leave behind his best friend his partner and his assistant mm-hmm. a guy called Peter Taylor played by Timothy Spall in the movie he's going to stay behind in Brighton so the story goes from there, basically. It's the period of that month and a bit that he spent up there. Clough was very uh, well known for his outspoken manner, and he basically just couldn't keep his mouth shut uh, when he arrived. So the first day on the job, he tells the players, including Johnny Giles, who was the mainstay of the Leeds team We've at the time. actually got that. He tells them. Oh, we have that, yeah. Well, we could hear that, because it's a good little clip, yeah. Mr. William Bremner, you're the captain, and a good one. But you're no good to the team, and you're no good to me if you're suspended. I want you fit for every game, and I want good, clean, attractive football for my captain, starting next week at the Charity Shield. And you, Irishman, God gave you skill, intelligence, and the best passing ability in the game. What God did not give you was six studs to wrap around another player's knee. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so that's Gilesy. it. Dirty leads, yeah, and that's Jared, that was Johnny Giles. But in fairness to him, now uh, the book, uh, David Peace's book, the original for um, Damned United, Giles, uh, Johnny Giles didn't like the way he was portrayed in the movie. Took out an injunction, and in the second print of the book, a lot of that stuff has been lifted out of it and been taken away. But the, you have to so remember, we all that, want the first print then, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know Johnny Giles, but I tell you, he comes across. Uh, you've been watching him on telly now for nearly twenty years, yeah. and he comes across as one of the greatest gentlemen in the country. He's a very, uh, uh, an honest, very nice, absolutely. and obviously an honest guy. And in the movie, he's not portrayed that way at all. He comes across as kind of a conniving, sly mm. guy who yeah. just takes a dislike to, uh, yeah. a personal dislike to Clough. Yeah. And I don't think that's the but way it was. sometimes, you know, know, chemically, some people just don't get on with each other. And that's sure. Way, and indeed, you know? in the, in the, uh, in the story, Clough was the guy that Revy wanted in as manager of Leeds yeah. when he left to go to England. But, uh, I, I just did not, that aspect of the story doesn't ring through. Peter McDonald is a fine actor, but he doesn't look anything like Johnny Giles. Yeah. He's about four feet taller than him, first of all. <laughs> And he doesn't look anything like him, but uh, I thought that's uh, kind of slightly unfair the way the Leeds mm. team are treated. But Football uh, movies, uh, oh, but, uh, well, they're yeah. normally pretty, pretty awful. awful, yeah, and, awful. But Fo- what about in terms of you know the footage and all? The that? What's football this is like, good yeah, here. Yeah, the yeah, footage yeah. is well introduced. Yeah. Uh, there's a certain amount of uh, computerized stuff that, that you know to change faces and things like that. But uh, and do there's lots of archive absolute, footage. Yeah, do they use archive? They footage? They do real? use archive yeah, footage. Yeah. yeah, the real stuff and a mix of real stuff and stuff that they shot for the movie, and it's all blended in very nicely. But they do keep the football to a minimum.
in a because like you say you, football in movies doesn't work yeah. there's, only, there's only been a handful of football movies and they just don't work yeah. so I don't know I enjoyed it Ian to be honest okay. with you I thought it was a, if you remember that it is a mix of fact and fiction that it's not okay. a, the true story but I did enjoy it and okay. I thought, it was, I thought uh, Sheen was extremely good The Damned United is what it's called the other one this week I, I'm interested to hear your verdict on this <laughs> yeah. Knowing Knowing Rose Byrne was in with us yeah, that's right, Page yeah. as well is the star of this and I think the, the idea of this film is very good yeah another yeah. end of the world apocalypse the yeah. end of the world is now kind of science fiction movie again a Nicolas Cage film about this mysterious string of numbers that they dig up that were buried for 50 years that might hold this code to predict the ultimate yeah. apocalypse of what's going to come so it's a science fiction thriller apocalyptic science fiction thriller so it can do what it wants basically with logic and with plotting and with yeah. uh, likelihoods and that's exactly what happens because Cage who hasn't been great recently in fairness to him Nicolas Cage he hasn't made very good choices he's made a string of really bad films and he plays a professor of astrophysics at Massachusetts Institute of Technology so right from the start we know the thing is completely preposterous anyway 50 years ago this strange little girl buried this page full of numbers that were all written down in a time capsule at her school cut to today and Cage's young son is given the string of numbers when they dig up the capsule he's looking at it one night while drinking a bottle of whiskey suddenly oh, everything comes into focus he can see uh, that the, all the numbers predict the day I and date did that to you. <laughs> no, I thought it did the other actually <laughs> day and date etc and time of all the natural disasters to have befallen the earth in the last 50 years and this, this astonishing thing is, is that there's three numbers left and the last one is only half complete so that's bad uh, what's worse is when he explains his theory to his friends, they all think he's crazy, and even worse than that, the fate of all mankind hangs in the hands of Nicholas and his amazing Technicolor hairpiece, yeah. because <laughs> he is, he's is he got to go out and save the world, and that's where Rose Byrne comes in, she's the girl, the granddaughter of the woman who originally no wrote the numbers in the first place, she thinks he's crazy too but changes his mind uh, when she uh, finds a little pile of black stones, a little black pebbles uh, she changes his mind and then decides to help him if only it was that easy to change a woman's okay, mind. Okay, so, yeah, exactly. And Here's uh, a pile of stones, darling. Okay, <laughs> I so found in the gravel. Science fiction, um, I, I'm, I wouldn't be mad on science fiction. No, movies. no. I did enjoy the idea. I just thought it got, it got a little bit crazy towards the end and, but maybe that's what you're saying about science fiction. They, they can, they have a, a license. They can do what they, do want. What they want. Yeah, they can do what they want. Yeah, it but is fiction. And it's, even in the terms of its own world that it creates yeah. in the story, the film has to make some kind of sense yeah. and that's where the problem is with knowing is that yeah. it's a limited budget you know it's not a huge blockbuster but they do very there's a couple of very nice special effects sequences yeah. there's a plane crash very well done very, very well yeah, done that's brilliant yeah. um, but the story itself is complete and utter rubbish yeah. and it gradually gets more rubbishy if you know what I mean over yeah. the course of you watching it yeah. but Proyas the guy the director made a couple of good movies starting out Dark City is a good film yeah. and uh He's got that visual sense. He's good with the images, but the story is a disaster. And Rose Byrne is beautiful. Oh, beautiful yeah. girl. Yeah, and a fine actress yeah. too, a fine actress. Okay, uh, are we standing by next door? Yes, hello. Okay, Boy, okay, yeah, okay. okay. Right, well, actually... Oh, oh my was God. Was that me? No, that's, uh, that's Marcus' headphones. Okay. Okay, right. All right, all right. Uh, seeing as we're mentioning him there, the man who never smiles, Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage, yeah. Okay. In a movie. In a movie. In oh, motion a motion picture. Oh, <laughs> motion yeah. Motion picture, all right. <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Um, number two, uh, two on my list is Anne Bancroft. Anne Bancroft and Nicolas Cage yeah. in a movie together. It's yeah. the one about the. It, uh, it's the one about the Secret Service agent looking after the president. Number three, now Robert Costanzo. Robert Costanzo. Oh, yeah. Robert Costanzo is a well-known name. Anne Bancroft and Nicolas Cage. Anne Bancroft and Nicolas Cage in a movie together. Is it Vampires? Joe's Kiss? giving us one of our looks there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, play along at home and in your car. We're looking for the name of the movie. Um, okay. Uh, next we have Sarah Jessica Parker my old buddy is in there as well oh ooh um, ooh Peggy Sue got married no no, no. is that one in Vegas uh, yeah the, um, the Elvis, Elvis movie one. yeah Honey honeymoon in Vegas, Vegas. oh bollock well done Joe congratulations <laughs> sorry John oh beaten again yeah.